In this video, we're going to create this design concept in Figma without using any plugins. So for this result, we're just going to be using native Figma features and this is the final result. So let's just get straight into it. As you can see here, I have a photo that I downloaded from unsplash.com and we're going to start by analyzing how we can actually achieve this effect and what needs to be done, right? So if we don't want to use any plugins like background removal, we're gonna have to use masks in Figma. And to mask just specific parts of the image, you need to use the pen tool and then draw the shape that you wanna basically cut out from the image, right? So basically the first step in this case would be drawing a shape that would mask this mountain, including this person descending from the mountain, and then putting that on top of the rest of the image, on top of the background, and then again, using a mask to show just partially what's in the background, right? Let me just go ahead and start drawing this shape with the pen tool. I'm gonna be starting right here and then I'm gonna be clicking and basically going along with the edges of the mountain shape and eventually the person. So yeah, I think you get the point what I'm about to do. I'm just gonna speed up this part. So this would be the mountain shape. I'm just gonna have to add one more point uh, about right here and then finalize the shape by connecting the by connecting the last point, right? So I'm gonna press enter now. This shape is finished. I'm gonna remove the stroke, add a fill that's gonna be red and I'm gonna decrease the opacity to be about 40% just so that we can see what's going on. And then also I'm gonna reduce the corner rounding to zero. We don't want any rounding, okay? And next up would be actually masking the person, which means I'm gonna again use my pen tool by pressing P and keep adding shapes basically just doing the same that I did with the mountain with the person. This is gonna be a bit more difficult because I'm gonna to have to cut out this shape right here and this one and this you know, space between the legs. So this means I'm, I'm gonna to have to create multiple shapes and then do shape subtraction to basically achieve this specific outline of the person. So let me just again start right here and let me just speed up this part so that so that we can, we can focus on the parts that are actually important in this workflow. Actually, now that I think about it, uh, we could, instead of using shape subtraction, just continue like this and cut out these spaces as well, right? So why don't we just simplify the process like that and keep going to capture all the details and get the final cutout, right? So let me continue. All right, so here it is. I have encircled the person uh, and then I'm gonna press enter and just again add a fill, remove the stroke FF00 to make it red and I'm just gonna make it a little bit transparent, right? So as you can see, we got these two shapes. Let me just duplicate them over here so that you can see what's, what's, um, what shapes we, do we have here. So this is obviously the person, the mountain, and now what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna leave this right here as a backup. I am going to select both of these and then press um, union selection. Uh, this is going to connect both of these shape into one shape. You can see that we have a union right here. I'm gonna rename this. I'm gonna rename this to foreground mask. Um, and then I am going to edit the fill so that it's 100%. Right now, I am going to add a rectangle by pressing R and drawing a rectangle right here. And this rectangle is going to be the same width as the image. So that's 1742 or actually 1740. I think that I anchored that to the mask. So 1740 um, line to the left. And then I'm going to position that on top of the image, but below the foreground mask so that basically we get 
this situation, right? So it's behind the mask, but it's in front of uh, in front of this image. So right now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna adjust or basically just think about where I wanna make the cut, right? So where I want to basically limit the background, right? Because this image is gonna become the background and then I'm gonna make a copy of this to become the foreground. So why don't we just do that, actually? Why don't we just select the image, duplicate that, right? And then I'm going to move that above the foreground mask. So above the foreground mask so that we get this. Now, I'm gonna select the foreground mask, the second image, and then I'm gonna go over to this button over here and click use as mask, which is going to mask this image so that we get basically just this. So I'm gonna rename this new mask group to foreground, okay? And let me just duplicate this and show you what we got. We got this, a nice cutout. If you zoom all the way in, you can see that we are slightly limited by um, these individual uh, positions of the, of the vertices, which means it's not 100% perfect everywhere, but we can actually do this little trick that I suspect we could do. When we select the mask and then go to effects, we can then add a layer blur which is going to, as you can see, it's going to blur the mask, which is gonna make the edges of the cutout a little bit, you know, gradual. As you can see, if I have no blur on the mask, it's very sharp and sometimes um, not as convincing, but when I increase the layer blur to to like one or two, um, that all of a sudden becomes more believable. So if we're gonna get some problems with authenticity, how the final result, uh, with the quality of the cutout in the final result, we're gonna use this little trick. Uh, so far, I'm just gonna leave it at this backup over here. And the second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename this rectangle to background mask, move that all the way to the background by pressing command option left bracket, and then I'm gonna select these two, right, image one and background mask, and I'm gonna do the same here, so we use as mask. So we're getting closer, right? Let me just create, let me just create a frame where we're gonna place all this stuff. So I'm gonna create a frame using my frame tool that will be approximately, let's say 1600 points wide. And I'm gonna move this inside of the frame like this, right? I'm gonna center this so that it's in the center. And I am probably gonna go for a slightly smaller size of this. So the overall width is gonna be like 1600. Let's try that. And let's experiment with the shape of this rectangle. For example, moving this anchor point over here, or we could make the whole person bigger. So why don't we just scale all this up to about, I don't know, like this size. And then we're gonna have to adjust a couple things. First of all, we're gonna have to adjust the background mask, which is gonna have to be, you know, somewhere around here, still 1500. Let's keep that at 1500. So now the person is more prominent and we could move the image of the person in the foreground to I don't know, like 60 pixels to the left. And then we're gonna have to move the background image, of course, as well. And then we also have to move the foreground mask 60 pixels to the left. But of course, this means that we get an overlap over here, which means I'm gonna use another rectangle to take care of this. So rectangle, I'm gonna put that on top of the foreground mask. I'm going to turn off the masking for this. And then I'm just going to place it right here and then do a shape subtraction. So selecting rectangle 29 and foreground mask and subtract selection. And then I'm going to use that as a mask, okay? So now we can just go to the subtract over here and adjust the position of this rectangle to basically get to whichever width or end area of this mask that we need. Right, so now the person is more prominent. I think that's better. So let's go for this. And I think we could experiment with the background mask to just create a little mirroring shape, right? So you get a descending line and then an ascending line. So that's a nice contrast. So why don't I also adjust the foreground mask with this specific shape, move that over here. Thanks to the subtraction that we have, the end stays right here. And yep, yeah, so we could assume that this is going to be on some like hiking equipment website. So you could, for example, add a header area. We could also add a headline that would say like hiking equipment. You know, we could use a different font. Why don't we try enter? Okay. 
with a smaller line height with some negative letter spacing and then use like some colors from uh, from the image like this dark brown and we could use another text object to do like a tagline that would say only the highest or just like premium hiking equipment this is gonna be rather bold smaller and placed above the main headline with no letter spacing or very small and this could be like a lighter color right so we could sample that from here we could also duplicate this text i'm just going to add some paragraph on this side and generally i think it's a good idea to keep all of the text in a single line including the eventual call to action which i'm gonna probably create right now um, i'm gonna go with this and then also the button so let me just duplicate this type in explore for the button auto width shift a and this is going to be white so this is going to be white no need for the drop shadow on the text uh, the text is going to be black actually so like this it's going to be also bold there's going to be a bit more padding some rounding probably just a very subtle rounding we want to make uh, this look serious maybe let's just keep this simple and remove the text altogether for now from the from the design we could do like a fictional logo like hike uh, very creative i know this could be extra bold or black zero in letter spacing and could be actually quite small like this i'm gonna align that to the left with this little line that we have created that divides the space between the header and the rest so it's like hike maybe even more heavy maybe some letter spacing quite substantial actually let's try that maybe let's just add a couple of lines like a hamburger menu but with just two lines to make this really simple so why don't we try that okay i think that's good maybe make it more prominent to make it clear that this is an interactive element maybe let's use three actually let's use three so that we use something that the users are already used to so i can imagine this effect being used for for example a website like this that would sell hiking equipment of course i am not out here to design a website but just to give you a basic understanding of how this could be used for example actually now that i think about it i think these corners could be sharp because i think it fits the overall feel of the website better so let me just remove this rounding and yeah and maybe also we want to make this go all the way to the edges again so let me just adjust this along with the background mask that will go here and then here and here enter brilliant so yeah this is it check the link in the description if you'd like to download the source file for this project this is one of the ways you can use this effect so it's just simple masking thanks for tuning in leave a like if this video helped you and i will see you in the next one